Good day for friends. New project this afternoon. Um, a guy who contacted me on Facebook a few months ago. A couple of months ago. And quite a lot of people contact me on Facebook. And not everyone that contacts me on Facebook says they're bringing a guitar in. Uh, actually says, uh, actually means they're bringing a guitar in. I've had quite a few people, quite a few people out there that do kind of waste time. And uh, not very many people, but you get to know them um, after a while and you get to recognise them. There's some, in fact, some people are blatantly, it's blatantly obviously just want to talk bullshit. But anyway, this is a lovely guitar. It's just come in from a guy who we shall call Tony, because uh, Tony is his name. And I'm going to show you what it is. I'm just getting rid of some gunk under the, um, under the strings. And it is a, it's a Telecaster. And yes, it's a Fender Telecaster. Here you go. It has got a Z8 serial number, don't know what that means. Made in the USA, beautiful looking guitar. Um, and it's come in with, um, there are dead notes around here, ringing around here after a 12th fret up this end, he said. And on first inspection, when I first looked at it, I said, well, it's not going to be right anyway. There is about one and a half millimetres of relief in this neck, around about between 7th and 9th fret. Far too much relief in there. But I would, without even checking it over properly, I would say it's got a high fret or two, somewhere above the 12th fret. Probably round about a higher fret, maybe round about 19, 18, 19. Um, I will not know until I've got the strings off and I have straightened the neck and looked at it. So that is exactly what I am going to do. Um, I don't know the year of the guitar. It is in good condition. Um, I'm trying to feel if there's any dings or anything on the neck. A couple of scratches here and there on the body, nothing untoward. Made at Corona, California this one according to the back plate. A couple of chips and scratches here. It's a nice, nice off-white. I wouldn't know what colour that would be. It's like a, between a white and a beige type of colour. You couldn't call it champagne. But it's like an off, it's definitely an off-white and it's got a sparkle to it. Uh, very, very nice. A ding on the back there. But yeah, what a very, very nice guitar. I think we'll have the proper Fender tuners on there. The ones with the two little nipples that stick into the wood there. Very, very heavy guitar. Absolutely beautiful. Nice rosewood neck. So what I'm going to do is first, I'll check the electrics, uh, check the setup, the intonation, make sure everything's just about right before I strip it. And then, But what I'm going to do then is, I'm going to remove the strings. I'm going to straighten the neck. And I'm going to check the frets, see how many unlevel frets we've got because I can't really price this up or advise here on what I'm going to do until I have done that. I would imagine there are a couple of high frets, shouldn't be many. Uh, and if that is the case, we will get all the work in with a with an intensive setup. An intensive setup being a player setup uh, with extra work, uh, which includes up to five frets leveled and re, re Excuse me. If it's six, I'd probably fit them in. The reason I do five is anything over five frets high, you're looking at a fret level. I can't by hand do any more than five frets. In fact, as a rule, really, any more than four frets, I should be re recommending a fret level rather than an intensive setup. But if we can get it all done in an intensive setup, right, I will do. It will save the owner some money and it will save me a lot of time. I mean, the time difference between an intensive setup, two hours, and a complete fret level with a setup five hours, three hours difference, and for £25 difference, I always benefit from doing the actual intensive setup at 75 sheets, rather than doing the uh, fret level and the setup at 100 sheets. So, for me, it's always best if it just needs an intensive setup. So I'm going to loosen the strings, I'm going to straighten the neck, make sure the truss rod's working all right, and I will come back, show you the results, and we can decide what we are going to do. This part of the video, and the next little bit I'm going to film, when I've appraised the guitar, will go to the owner before I start doing the work, so we can determine if he agrees. Well, we we'll first find out see if he agrees with my diagnosis, and if he does, if it is, then he then has to commission the work. So, back in a second. So, also to give you some idea where we are with guitar, um, I've just checked uh, the intonation. The intonation was out on the IE string, but the rest of the strings it's pretty much bang on. Now the problem with this guitar is. We have far too much relief here, so we have a big bend in this part of the neck, 
it straightens out here and we're getting buzz everywhere. And that's the trust starts to dead now. Now, I know for starters, the radius is not right on this part of the bridge. Also, the action here is far too low. Whoever set this up before put too much relief in there and measured the action in the wrong place. So you've got a really high action around about the seventh and ninth frets and a really low action up here. What we need to do is I need to straighten the neck out and raise the action to about two millimeters here, about one and a half millimeters there on the high about 1.75, two millimetres on the low. It will give us a straight neck all along. It will bring the action here up and we'll set the radius on there and we'll get it all set right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set the truss, loosen the strings, set the truss rod, set the action, come back and we'll see where we are. So when putting the Allen key in the truss rod adjuster, I found that the truss rod was loose or just nipped, just off loose. And I've tied it up and I've given it at least Three quarter turn and there is enough adjustment there's enough adjustment in there to get the neck straight and I have the neck absolutely straight now as straight as we're going to get it there's a tiny tiny little bit of a gap at this end here we get that we tend to get that with older guitars but that is as straight as I can get that neck so now what I'm going to do is on camera I'm going to go across with a fret rocker um, just to see if we've got any high frets and I imagine if we do have some there's one it's going to be some down this end that's two let's go with fret two two and six let's check the edges as well it wasn't two it was three four five six I like that edge that's two Seven's high, that's three, that's high four. This one's gonna need a fret level. Four frets so far. Four frets so far, and one high there. Five. Seven. So we have seven high frets so far. It'd be easier if I took the strings off, one snapped anyway. Seven high frets. Eight. We have nine high frets. Um, I will take the strings off, absolutely totally straighten the neck, and I will go. I will make sure the neck's absolutely straight again. I'll change the angle of the camera, and I will go across the frets again once I've got the strings off. But what I'm recommending is, on this guitar, we are going to need a fret level. Um, I'm also going to check the electrics, which I've not checked yet. Needs a fret level. Um, it's the reason you're getting fret balls anyway. They're not that bad but nine frets need work it means I've got to remove the nut you're going to have a new nut as well if I can manage to level the frets without removing the nut I will do so normally we don't uh, we can't do that but cutting a knot is going to be an expense for that as well so I'm going to try and save the nut because I have to charge 25 quid for replacing the nut in fact I actually do a nut replacement for 45 quid um, so I will do all I can to save that um, so stay tuned, I'll be back shortly. While I'm at it, I've come across this before and I talked to the owner of a guitar about this and he was on about, these have got like one wind grinder around these posts and they threaded through and what a pain in the arse and a ball ache it is to get these out. Why can't people wrap guitar strings properly? Get some winds around there so this becomes a pain in the arse 
for me to get off the guitar now, you see, because that's wrapped and looped through. So what I have to do is, I've got chores. But to get in, go and snip these. I'm a great, I'm into, I mean, what's the word? Putting wraps around posts. I put about a dozen wraps around the IE, and I put about six around this, the, G, the B, and then I go round about, you're looking at five, four, three, two wraps. And that's how I wrap, I, I like putting wraps around posts. So this is a bloody ball ache for me now, because I've got to go in here without digging into the guitar and try and get these out. They can more or less guarantee you've got the wrong part. So I've got to go in there, I've then got to snip that, and I've got to fuck about trying to get little bits out, pardon me French. But look at that, what an absolute ball ache that is. I'm leaving all this in the video, uh, I've decided. Um, it'll this will be part of the appraisal video anyway. I'm even going to keep that little bit of French in there now. I've not sworn on a video for I don't know how long. I don't really swear that much anymore. But some things get my pip. I'll get these out off camera. Um, and I'll come back. So this one's not having it. So I've got to uh, basically, I've got to remove the whole tuner to try. I can't even get it off lot because that string is holding that on there. Now I don't want to be doiking about with this thing because if I slip with this I'm going to put a hole in the lacquer on the neck and I've got to get re-sprayed. Re-sprayed and I don't want to do that. So some prat. Now I've got it. What an absolute ball ache that is. What an absolute ball ache. People, why can't we do things right? And again I bet this, if anything, I bet you pound to a penny this has been to a music shop where they don't have qualified guitar techs and they were just as someone who could probably do a setup. I know so many shops where anything above and beyond a setup, they can't help you out. They shouldn't be offering services if you haven't got a qualified guitar tech or a luthier in there. I would say qualified guitar tech. Always, boys and girls, always look a qualified guitar tech, someone with great reviews, someone where you can go to his place of residence or his place of work, and commandeer someone that knows what the heck they are doing to do the work. Right, so what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to move the camera, I'm also going to stop moaning, I'm going to move the camera, I'm going to get this neck absolutely straight, and we're going to go across with the fret rocker, and we're going to mark off where all of the frets need attention. Right, I've got you as close in as I can, and I've, I've had to shut the window because all the, it's just so weird that all the neighbours seem to have all come out right now. So I've got no peace. So there you go. Uh, you've got the front window right here, so any light you should be able to see. And here, I've got as little a gap as actually possible. There, I've got the neck as straight as I can get it. And uh, I hope you agree with that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go across with the fret rocker. Like I say, four sides. I've already marked off the areas uh, that have high frets, so I'm just going to go across the frets now. We have 13 high frets by the way, now I've got the next straight, so we, we've determined the next straight, let's listen for the rock. Don't know if you can hear that one, you can certainly hear that, that's one fret, two frets. Three frets, four frets, five frets, six frets, seven, eight frets, nine frets, ten, eleven, same fret all the way across this one. 11, 12, 13 frets. It's no wonder some guitars don't play right. I have no idea for the life of me why there's so much relief in this neck. There are two mil of relief in this neck round about this area. It's took me nearly a full turn on the truss rod Allen wrench to get the neck straight. So there we go, straight neck, 13 frets. Need leveling. That's a guitar neck level. 
There's a little bit of pitting on some of these frets as well. I'm going to try and keep the nut intact. If I have to replace the nut, it's going to be another 35, 40 quid on top. I actually charge 45 quid for a new nut because not only do I, I can't just pull it and just knock that out. I've got to cut that out. Take my time cutting it out, make sure I don't damage everything. I've got to then replace it, put a new one in, and I've got to carve the new one. Normally I use bone or I could hand carve one from Fender Cyclovac. Um, I'm going to try and keep my nut intact because I've only got work on this fret from this fret to this fret down here. I'm going to do the whole lot, but I'm going to try not to go into the nut there. So, my recommendation well, it's not a recommendation, you've got no choice, you need a fret level. Uh, included in the price is a complete intensive setup where everything gets removed, checked, the electrics get done, everything gets cleaned. I'll remove all the saddles, clean all under there. Uh, we'll get everything all cleaned up and you'll get a complete setup with that. Considering it's five hours work, it's good skilled work as well. I think £100 is a pretty good price. So I'm going to post you this video. Uh, even that, saying that, uh, I will post that video separate, the appraisal video, but it will be included in the final mix anyway. So, let me know what you think, get back to me, see you soon. So, just a couple of things on um, this Telecaster. I do not know the model, talk to the owner, neither does he. He does know that it is a 2008 model. Now, there is a date inside which dates it on well, it's July the 22nd 2008 there's a W stamped in there and there's a number in there 56186 I don't know if that's a number or what but that is what is stamped inside of the neck pocket what a beautiful guitar I don't know if you can see that finish or appreciate it it is a metallic off-white colour very very nice indeed it has the adjuster in there for the neck angle, so you can shim, rather than shim the neck, you can move it up or down, or to the neck angle, akin to the guitar. Um, neck plate, Calif uh, Corona, California, Fender, blah, 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 blah. That's the neck plate. These things are going to go away. The body is going to go back in the case, uh, because I am only going to be working on the neck for the time being, because this bench is clear. I'll place the body on the fretting bench and I will show the neck as is. I'll be removing all this hardware so I can bolt this to a piece of MDF. I don't think it has to go on the jig. Uh, I'm going to bolt it to a piece of MDF, bolt the piece of MDF to one of my benches and I will go across with a level beam and we'll skim across all these frets until they are level with each other. Um, first I need to remove the hardware so I'm going to crack on with that. Um, once that's done, I will bolt it to a piece of MDF and um, I'll come back and show you how we're going to go on with levelling these frets. I'm going to do my level best to save the nut. If I have to replace a nut as well, it's going to be another heap of money on top and it's not going to be cheap. It's going to be 10 quid for a nut and it's going to be about 35 quid labour um, because we can't just bang a knot out, we have to cut that out precision, keep it clean and not damage any of this area, both sides. Then we have to fit and carve a new knot. Now like I said, the first fret I need to be working on is here, so I'm thinking if we can just level up to this fret, I won't need to remove the knot. It always, we recommend removing a knot when doing a fret level, but in this case we may just get away with not doing that. Frets are still marked up from the other day, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 frets out of the 21 all have black marker on them I will check that again before I start but end of the day makes no difference the frets need leveling and recrowning so I will get it up get the hardware off get it all taped up get it uh, bolted onto a piece of 30 millimeter MDF get it all straight and we will get it ready for leveling right just a very quick video just to show the setup for leveling the frets on this neck I'm not going to remove the nut, I'm just going to skim across all the frets from here to here with a level beam or a levelling beam. Um, I think I'll put it away, I have, I'll get that out right now. We've got two grits of paper on there, we have 240 this side which is going to be used for removing most of the material. Then the 400 grit side for smoothing. Now before I do that, you'll notice I've taped up the sides of the neck. 
which helps me remove the strips across I'm going to put on in a moment. Before I do anything, just need to make sure I've got the neck still straight, which I have. That's fantastic. I've clamped this side to the table, that is clamped loosely at this end, just to stop anything moving about. Uh, nothing to move about anyway, so now what I need to do is tape around the frets, which I'm going to do with three different sizes of masking tape. Um, the reason, by some reason I put these strips on there, when I come to remove my tape later I pull the strips off and it'll rip all these bits off at the same time. So I'm going to get on with that, once that's done I'll be going across with the levelling beam and I'll be checking the frets for level every, every few strokes just to make sure we're level. Once they're level we can come back and I'll show you how we go about recrowning the frets once they are level. So just a quick update showing me just about there. I've leveled the frets, been across with the 240 grit side and the 400 side. I've also, I've just remarked the frets up again. Just going to brush 400 grit off a little and I'm just going to go across. And what we're looking at is these are all coloured in, in marker pen. I'm looking to remove all of the marker pen in all areas. Not too many so nice. I'm not pressing on here. I'm just letting the beam do the work. And if I've done my job right, the pen should disappear from every area. And there you go, one tiny area there, just give it another brush. I know that fret was a little bit high, so... That is it. I'm pleased with that. Push off these areas. The frets are now all silver tops. Now what we've done is we've flattened the frets. We need to put that crown back in. So that is going to be the next job. So I'm going to prepare everything for that. And I'll come back with another update again shortly. Second Fender neck on the block today. And this is the 2008 Telecaster. I know nothing else about it. But it is now on for the frets being recrowned. Already leveled the frets, covered them all in black marker pen. Uh, I'm going to go across the whole fingerboard and the frets, because they've been levelled, are now flat. And a fret needs a crown. That is the arc on the top and the string touches this part uh, where it goes this way. And you need it to touch as little amount as possible. So we make a ridge right across the centre of the fret. No more than a third of a millimetre wide, because at the moment you've got two millimetres or more of string touching the fret. So we're going to put a crown back in. And the string is going to touch just the top bit like so. So where these are now flat, you get the idea, I'm going to make them curved again. And I'm not going to be using this, even though that is curved to two and a half millimetres, which will give me the right arc on the top. I always do it with a hand file. I have two files. That's coarse. The edges are ground flat, so I can't mark the fingerboard, but I tape up the fingerboard anyway. And we have a coarse one, which I will go over the fret and I will arc over, arc over, arc over as I'm filing to get that flat area and those flat edges start arcing them over and arcing them over like so. I will finish with a fine cut file, pretty much the same, slightly different. It's not equilateral like the other one is. It's got one flat side and two arc sides. The edges again, ground flat. I'll use that, so I'll be using this one first. This one second, we always wipe and clean the file after one fret. We don't want burrs on there going into it and gouging scratches into the fret. And then I will finish it off crowning with the art file there and just remove any extra burrs. I've shown this many times, so I'm not going to show the work right now, but I will come back when I'm doing the final three and I'll show you uh, the final two or three frets. So hold tight for that and I will be back shortly. So as promised, I'm just going to come in and show you how I recrown the frets. And I'm just going to do the final three because all the rest have been done. And a couple of things I always do first, what I do first is check one back that is level, like the last one I've just done is level. So I check the one I've just done, which is this one. Then I go back one, check it's all level there. So I know I've done that right, crowned it right, but I move forwards one. And I check that the level is going to be okay. And once I know that all the levels are fine, can now move on to this fret. Right, you may see from there that there is black pen covering the whole of the fret. This is because the 
fret is flat from when I leveled it and where it's flat and I want to put that crown back in going across this length or this way you need to put that crown back in so when the string hits it the string just hits the top of the arc and I want that line to be around about a quarter of a millimetre maybe a little bit more a third of a millimetre so I'll do this I use a number of files crowning files I have a coarse cut fine cut and I have a finishing profiler so really easy what I do is I'm going to file I'm going to start with the uh, cut perpendicular straight up 90 degrees and what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll over so I'm going to roll the file towards you as I cut as I cut as I cut as I cut forward backward motion I can just go one way if one because it's only a one way cut but forwards and backwards is still fine and see I'm rolling more toward you as I do it And I'm going to go to the other side, do exactly the same. I'm going to roll away from you this time. I like to do it like this. And I'm rolling slightly away from you. Like I say, this is a coarse file. So this is going to remove the material I want to remove. Always, every time you remove a file, always clean it. Every single fret, every time you use it. And go back and cut again. And I'm looking to get a thin black line down the centre of that fret, which I now have. It's probably half a millimetre in places. I'm now going to move to the fine cut file. Make sure it's clean, clean the area, and again. Because on the far side, I'm going to angle slightly towards the camera. Just getting that line nice and thin, then I'm going to come, going to come this side, and again, going to angle slightly away from the camera. Always watching, by the way, that I'm looking to maintain a perfect semicircle at this edge, which I have. Clean the file, in case I forget to clean it when I use, go on to the next fret, it will be clean. So always, always cleaning, coming in with the curved file. And this one helps me to get that semicircle on the edge on the on the uh, bevels here. And this is just removing extra burrs. Always cleaning, straight in that groove, right in there. And that is that one done. Now what I do again is take the fret rocker, go back one to check we still maintain the level do the one I've just done everything's level then move on to the next one and everything is level so that's right we know we've got all these level with each other all along and I've got two more to do I'm not really going to talk on these last two I'm just going to work once these are all done by the way we're going to move on to the polishing which is where the time comes in it's time consuming polishing because I'll go with five or six different grits of sandpaper from 800 grit through to two and a half thousand grit and I'll finish off with steel wool but before we do that let's get these crown back one, check the one I've just done and there you go, we are all level everywhere final one
that is it. We have done the crown in. These frets are now ready to be polished. Um, I'll explain quickly. I go through five different grits of paper from 800 through to 2500. So 800, 1000, 1200, 1500, 2000, and 2500. We polish this way from both sides. And we also polish the bevels first. We'll get all these rounded off. I will round off any burrs on these bevels with a number four file, like so. Just a couple of strokes just to get any burrs off there. I'll do that first. Then I'm going to move on to the polishing. Once the polishing is done, we can get the neck back on the guitar, get the guitar strung up, and get it ready to go out. So, welcome back. We have a Telecaster neck now in the vice. All strapped in nice and tight. We've got cushioning each side so we don't mark the neck itself. And I've start, just started to polish the frets. And I'm going to go, I'm not going with six grits, I'm going with five grits here. I'm going to start off with 1,000. I've already started to do my first four. 1,000 grit through to 1,200, 1,500, 2,000, super fine, 2,500. Uh, I will finish off with steel wool. And it's just a matter of, I've already been down the sides and over the tops of the bevel just to remove any birds we might have had there. So just on the top of the bevel, just round them over so there's no sharp edges. It's nice and simple like this, just a matter of. And then what I do is over the frets. I've already done the first four, like I say. So it's just a matter of really getting in there, get on the top, then get into the corners there, right in and right in and get some it will make your arms ache and your fingers sore but i do that many of these now kind of get used to it i've got two of these to do this afternoon i've got a uh, strap neck to do after this one so got a crack on it's just a matter of giving them a right good polish and like i say we do this with this grit then we go through the other four grits i'm going to go through and once that's done we finish off with the finest grade super fine steel wool and once that's all done we'll peel off the tape we can treat the fingerboard and there you go that's the first four done and we're going to look dull first off you don't worry about that i already know that we are bringing these up to a high polish and polish doesn't mean shine it also means smoothness and i can see there they're getting really really smooth so yeah i'm going to crack on if I've got 22 frets and I'm going with 5 grits of thingy, it means I've got 110 of these to do. Wowzers. And I've only used that much paper, I've done 4. So just crack on there. I shall come back, I imagine, when I get to the uh, steel wool stage and you will see the difference in these frets. They look absolutely fantastic. There you go, five done, 105 more to go. So two grits in and we can already see the effect it's had on the tape um, that we're using to keep uh, the, the fingerboard protected. Let me just get a brush, brush that off. And I've only gone with two grits so far, gone with 1,000 and 1,200. And the frets are already starting to look really, really good. Fantastic, bear with me a second. Don't know what you can see. This may help. That may help things to look a little bit better. Starting to look really, really good now. Three more grits to go. Back soon. And here we are. I'm just finishing off the last fret with steel wool. Nice fresh piece here. I've done all the other ones and it's just a matter of getting right over the fret and getting right into the corners. So you'll make a groove. In there but just get your thumbnail get right at the back and come in right at the front and then across the top and these frets look absolutely beautiful they should be unscratched unmarked and they look well they look amazing they look really really good don't know what you can see from there should look pretty good So there you go. So I'm going to remove the neck. I'm going to remove the tape. The next part of the job is I'll clean up the knot a little and I will uh, treat the fingerboard to some mineral oil. And there we are. 
and that's all cleaned up. I've um, mineral oiled the fingerboard, give them a clean, let that soak in a little while to nourish the wood, and have a look at these frets. These frets have all been levelled, they've been recrowned, and they've been polished. I'm just going to hold it there if you want to zoom in. Been levelled, recrowned, and polished. They look and feel superb. It's super shiny, super smooth. I'm going to zoom in on the edges there, just check everything. Absolutely beautiful. So, Mr. I'm trying to remember who's one. Oh, this is Tony's. Mr. Starbuck is going to be absolutely over the moon with these. I've just put the tuners back on, you notice. Put them back on in exactly the same order as they came off. I always mark them up before I remove them. And a good job, really, because these are staggered. Where well, you've got two one size, E and the A, and the other four are all shorter. So it's a good job I did that in a way. I'm going to peel off these stickers now. I'm going to put this neck back on the guitar. I'm going to stick some strings on, get the guitar set up, and it will be all ready to go. Back soon. So I'm going to show something I don't normally show. And the only reason I'm doing that is when this Telecaster came in, it was probably the worst setup guitar I've ever seen in probably my life. It came in, they were two, two and a half millimetres of uh, relief in the neck and then the strings were that low above and beyond the 12 fret they were nearly touching the frets at the far end so the neck had to be straightened out that's what it was all about and the reason someone put that much relief in there is they knew the frets weren't right and um, so what I'm doing now is I'm at the bridge end of the guitar and what I'm doing is I'm setting the radius of the saddles and what I do is once I've got the low E and the I where I need them to be with the neck and the relief set how I want it. I've got about a quarter of a mil relief in this neck now, which is what I want. And I'm looking for a distance from the top of the fret to the bottom of the low E string at the 12th fret to be about 1.75 millimeters, which it is. And we're looking for about 1.5 millimeters on the 12th fret between the top of the fret and the bottom of the string, about 1.5 millimeters. But once those two strings are set, then what we do is we hire all the other saddles, take them higher than they want to be, and I'll go with a radius gauge under the strings. And this goes under the strings to give us that arc, because that arc, that nine and a half inch radius arc there, will match the fingerboard. So when I drop the strings to rest, I've got the first and the last strings on there, all the others are higher. When I drop them all, so they're just touching this arc, it means all the strings are radius perfectly in line with the nut and in line with the fingerboard. It means the string is the same distance from the frets along the whole length of the guitar. And there's no there's no difference between any of the strings they are all that distance away from the frets it makes your guitar supremely playable so i'm going to do that so i'm going to move the camera and i'm going to move the camera while you're here and i'm just going to zoom in a little and i'm going to show you how i do that it's really simple and it's probably why i never really show this so i'm going to go try and get the bridge somewhere in the middle there and there we are and i think now i can just zoom in a little bring you in a bit closer i can explain Greater detail, what I mean. It's just for argument's sake, just nip across there like that. There you go. And I can just get in there a little bit closer. Right, here you go. So, this, this string, the first string and the sixth string, where that I need them to be in relation to the 12th fret and the distance from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string. I've already checked that 1.75 this side, 1.5 this side, which is a good marker. So, now what I'm looking to do is I'm going to take the nine and a half inch radius gauge, place it under all the strings. I'm going to pull it across just to show that that is the radius. We're absolutely bang on there. So nine and a half inch radius, then the telecaster. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it right up to the bridge. And it doesn't matter about the tuning at this point. I've already had the guitar in tune. The strings are too tension. And now we'll see that this, this, all these four strings, these are perfect. These four strings are all high. So what I need to do now is I just need to drop these saddles and I need to keep them as straight as I can. And I'm just going to drop each saddle so that string just touches the top of the radius cage. And once it does, we'll follow in the radius. And once it's done, I'll level these all out by eye. That's looking pretty good there. A little bit too high. And now I'll go over into this one. It doesn't take too long and 
We'll tidy up the saddles once I got them all done. So a little bit higher on that one. And I think we are just about there. And let's see. And now we have all of the strings touching the radius gauge. That one's a little bit low, so let's bring it up a little bit more. So that is it, I'm happy with that. And now by eye, I'm just going to go and look. I'll bring this up a touch because I saw this one was a little bit low. Just going to slightly straighten there. Level these off a little. That's looking very, very good. Level off there. That looks good to me. And here, I'm just going to go. Just bring this side up a little. This side down a little. And that even looks pleasant to the eye there. And I will check one more time. Nine and a half inch radius. Now this one's just a little bit high, so I'm going to drop this a quarter of a turn. Nice. And this one just under a quarter of a turn, and that should be right. And there we are. There we are. That is beautiful. We are set. Everything's just touching the radius gauge. So now we have the radius set there, which matches the radius on the fingerboard. And the radius on the knot. Uh, really, really happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to measure again the 12 fret. See if I'm happy where I am. Just over 1.75. I have to check that from the other side. Take my word for this. I know you're not seeing anything at the moment, but it means me fiddling about with camera again. So I'm just going to check this side here. We are just over 1.5 so that is it I've got that set exactly where I want it to be or where I need it to be all that remains for me to do now is to retune the guitar stretch the strings and then I can go and just have a look and see how the nut slots are cut I'm going to maybe just cut these nut slots just a little bit a couple look a little bit high so come back for that I'll be back in a second another problem area we sometimes have is with the nut because if the nut is cut too high or the, group, the slots aren't cut low enough, we end up with a higher action over the first fret. Now, for instance, I like to go to about 0.4 millimeters from the top of the fret to the bottom of the string, and this has a gap of about no Same again. Same there, huge gap. There's almost half a millimeter gap between these bottom three strings and here I like to go about 0.3 millimeters at this end I've got 0.4 mil there and we're still 0.2 gap so all of these strings are too high above this first fret and that's because the nut slots aren't cut deep enough and the problem with that is you might think I said okay it's only one fret but it makes a big difference if you're fingering or playing a bar F chord here and you've got a barred finger across there it's going to push everything sharp because you're having to push down so much you're stretching the strings. Now, once you get past the G or the G sharp, up to around about the A area, you're not going to notice anything. But anything up here, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, the chords or notes are going to be slightly sharp and you're going to notice it. And it's why it's so important to cut your nut slots deep enough. Now, fortunately, for this owner, this is all part of the process. And I have Hosco nut files. And what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut these slots deeper and I'm going to aim for 0.3 millimeters above the fret on the first string and 0.4 millimeters between the top of the fret and the bottom of the low E string or the sixth string. That is way high. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I'll work it and I'll just stretch the string over and I will take the 10 gauge. Now this is, remember this is a nine string which is a 10 gauge. So what I'm going to do is just go in there and slightly just cut that slot a little bit deeper just a couple of passes that's all I need to do and this will round off the slot as well and it's just gonna now I'm gonna go a little bit flatter I'm still too high 
So again, the combat, you don't want to go too deep because you go too deep, you knack at it, you've got to put a new nut on. I've done that before. And I'm slightly angling the file back to give a little bit of angle to take this toward the string tree. So you don't want it perfectly horizontal, you want to go just angle slightly back towards the headstock itself. Only slightly, don't go mental otherwise you start getting, if you start getting it, the string rings like a so tight, it means you've cut your slot wrong. I don't always know you're getting there when um, you don't go flatter. Come a little bit flat, so we know we've moved a little bit. And again, always checking, still not deep enough. And we'll go again, cleaning the file. If you slightly angle it as you go in, doesn't matter if you're a little bit wider, you don't want it pinching the string because that will also cause a sitar effect. Again, always check in. Still too high. It's quite, it'd be quite easy to uh, go a bit gung ho at this and cut too deep. I've done it many a time. So just take your time, be patient. It's not going much flat, but we are getting closer. And that's 0.4, so we still need to go a little bit deeper. I remember the old days, I used to get impatient doing this, and I used to think, oh, I'll just hack into it. And I've done that, and I've nearly cut the nut in half. And then I've had to replace a whole nut, which, when you carve them by hand, takes a flipping while. So don't make that mistake. Get in there. We're going to now swap over to 0.3 millimetre because this, oh, that's where I want to be. I mean, in some cases, I go down to 0.25, 0.3 millimetres, that's where I want to be. Still a fair bit to go. This is about 0.5 still at the moment, much too high. Keep cutting. Very nearly there. So I angle back just slightly now, just for a break angle over the knot. I think that's just about going to get us where we need to be. Still too high. It means it's a nice piece of bone here because it's really hard. That's great to see. A little bit more. Get in there, and there we go. That's where we want to be. You can't see where you are. If I try and go in over the top, so here we go 0.3 millimeters. Not had a gap at all. That's perfect, that's where we need to be. Now when we're fingering F note, it 
fingers a perfect F note. You might have just seen that for a glimpse, see if we can get it again. It's all over the place. Beautiful. I'm going to move on to the B string. I'm going to get all of them done. I'm going to go 0 0.3 there, 0 0.3 there, 0 0.35 there, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. That's how I'm going to do it. So I'm going to crack on with this. I'll come back and show you the result and um, that'll be it. And here we are, all done. And I'm going to go in the first couple of strings, or the last couple of strings if you read it right. 0.4 millimeters low E string. A little bit sharp there. Just look, listen for that little bit of buzz. Beautiful. Next string A. Plucked open. Clean. 0.4 mil. Just touching. Now we're going to change to 0 0.3. I'm going to go with the D string. Plug the D. This is how I like to set it. It's not. It's not gospel. string go from the other side 0.3 mil same with the B string and finally the E string high E string so I have 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.4 0 0.5 that's the height between the top of the fret and the bottom of the string just check we're in tune That is the Telecaster all set up. And that is it, and we are all done on this. I don't know, know nothing else other than it's a 2008 Telecaster. It came in, the setup on it was awful. It was at least two millimeters of relief around about a nine fret, um, and the strings were almost touching the frets at this end. So we sorted all that out. On getting the neck straight and checking everything, realizing 12 or 13 frets were the frets were all over the place. So we've gone with the complete fret level, which means skimming over the top of the frets. Once that's done, we have to recrown them all again because when we skimmed over them and flattened them, we need to put the crown back in. Then we've given them a high polish. We have treated the fingerboard with mineral oil. We have given a complete setup where we've recut the nut, re radiused um, the saddles and the bridge there set the action height correct at the 12th fret and we're now determined that the guitar is playing absolutely right I guarantee this guitar has not played better and it sounds beautiful that's as much as you get in I'm not plugging it in I might plug it in after the video but this one is done it belongs to a guy called oh I forgot Tony Starbuck is the owner of this guitar Someone is coming to collect this on Friday. It is all ready. It's been a pleasure to work on this. It's been really good fun uh, doing what I do, sorting out frets. Even though I do say so myself, those frets look absolutely wonderful. They are like glass. I will hold up the guitar so you can pause and go and have a look if you want to. Absolutely beautiful. So that's another one wrapped up. Fret Friend has another guitar finished. So I'm Victor Christian. Signing off, just before I go, remind you to go to my website, fretfriend.co.uk, or even better, facebook.com forward slash N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. That's facebook.com forward slash N-G-1-7. So until next time, boys and girls, be good to each other, and I will see you soon.